Hello, I'm Bertha Karpetian, uh, the owner of School Products Yarns and the creators, uh, creator of Bertha's blog. Today I want to talk about the technique which seems to be quite a problem for many people, um, short rows. I use it a lot in my patterns and I use it a lot in my books Runaway Knit knits and uh, I love that technique because it allows you to construct very interesting sweaters and lately um, my uh, one of my latest patterns uh, blue uh, bluebell uh, yoke sweater I used it a lot uh, I used it again um, for the yoke and in my latest post uh, on Berta's blog I am talking about um, a little fragment from um, from this particular pattern and today I would like to show you how I do short rows. So in the pattern, in this pattern for the yoke, um, it says to operate uh, yoke on 39 stitches. So I have 39 stitches here. And I want to show you, this is a very, very good example of um, short rows techniques because we're using grip one by one, knit one per one. So you would be able to see uh, uh, my uh, short rows uh, done on knit and purl stitches. First, we are going, as it says in the pattern, to the last seven stitches. So we are working to the last seven stitches. The reason we are using uh, short rows techniques is that sometimes we need to do, uh, uh, we need to work on one side uh, which is longer than another side or do the darts. So to advance one side against another, we're using short rows. Uh, in the particular pattern for the, uh, for the sweater, I uh, wanted the line which is closer to uh, the neck to be tighter than the line which is closer to the body. That's why we're using darts in here all over the sweater to advance this part versus this part. Okay, so we are going to the last seven stitches and at the seven stitches we're counting. When we approach seven stitches, here's two more. Here is zoom in. So here's how we do it. We take this stitch from the left needle to the right needle, we slip it. Then we take the yarn, wrap it around the stitch and turn the knitting around. Then we take that stitch without knitting it and transfer it slipping it to the right needle and at the same time I would recommend to put the marker on the needle because that will help you later to recognize your uh, short rows portions and you continue on that row as usual as established till the end of the row so we're knitting and purling till the end of the row and um, as we would approach the end of the row, then the next portion of the pattern would tell us to work to the last 14 stitches. First we worked to the last seven stitches, now we're gonna be working till the last 14 stitches. But first we have to finish this row. So wrong side row is finished. We are turning around and starting working on the next right side row. So the next right side row shows us that we need to work till the last 14 stitches. Okay, so we're going to the last 14 stitches. I loved short rows because uh, it allows me to construct a lot of interesting sweaters. I'm using that on yokes and I'm using that on shawl colors and I'm using that on scarves and many other things. So now we have to go to the last 14 stitches and we are gonna count it. So we have seven here. Now here is our 14 stitch. Okay. Let's 
make sure five seven okay so the next 14 stitch uh, we're going to wrap around is purl stitch which is very good so the yarn is in the front we slip the purl stitch without doing anything to it then we take the yarn wrap around the stitch turn the whole knitting around slipping it back to the right needle putting the marker on i don't have the right markers but it's better to use the the round markers they don't slip back and finishing the wrong side row So hopefully with this video, a lot of my customers and followers would be more comfortable in doing short rowing and that will allow them to be advanced and do a lot of my more advanced patterns. Okay, we are on the next one. So now it says in our pattern to go to the last 21 stitch. So let's go to the last 21 stitch. Stitches. Okay, 21 stitches. Okay. Let's see. So, okay, we passed it. Okay. Now, one more time, we have a neat stitch. So the yarn is in the back. You slip it to the right side needle. You turn it around. You turn, uh, you wrap it around. You turn your knitting and you slip it back to the right side needle and you're finishing the row. Okay, so, oops, I guess we lost one marker, so we'll replace that marker here. That's why I don't like this type of markers, because they can easily escape. Okay, so the next one will tell us to go to the last 28 stitches. Okay, 28 stitches. Okay, let me count five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight. So we're wrapping, last time we wrapped the knit stitch, so now we have to be wrapping the, the pearl stitch. Okay, so we're wrapping the pearl stitch again. So I take the stitch with the yarn up front, I take the stitch to the right side needle, wrap it around turn, and finish the row. Okay, so we have one more, and we're done. Now it says go to the last 35 stitches and the 35 stitches are right here. We didn't put the marker last time and we definitely should put the marker in here. And now here's our 30, oops, I lost my stitches. Okay, this is my last wrap around. So I take this 35th yarn in the back because it's a neat stitch. One more time. We're slipping it to the right side needle, wrapping it around, slipping it back to the right side needle and finishing 
zero. Okay, now look how beautiful it is. One side is very short and the other side is very tall. Now I would like to show you, which is also quite a problem for many people, how to do the, so to speak, I call it smoothing crow because you make it smooth. The, the reason we're doing a wrapping and a turning that we would like to avoid the holes. And the only uh, way to avoid the holes is to knit the stitch and the wrap together. Here is how we do it. So we start working on the smoothing crow. When we approach the stitch, which has a wrap around it, I call it belt. So I take the wrap, put it on the needle, and work it together. And we don't need the marker anymore. So then we proceed to the next one in a regular order. So when we approach the next one, the next one is pearl. So I usually take it from the back, the, the belt, put it on the needle and pearl it together. And marker is off. Then the next one. And the next one is knit, marker out. Take from the front to the needle and knit it together. And then we're going to the next one. Taking the marker off from the back to the front and purl them together. Okay, so if you um, really progress with this technique and do it neatly, the result would be magnificent because you will not be able to see where your short rows are. And that's the biggest achievement when you don't, when you cannot see where your short rows are and everything look very smooth and it just does the trick and the shaping. You can see that it's beautifully, it's looking beautiful. And in the, in the yoke here, I was trying to figure out where my short rows are and they're really, really hardly seen. So that is all for this technique. And I welcome your comments and uh, questions. And I uh, wish you all happy holidays. And I'll be posting more, uh, more comments and, and uh, posts very shortly. Bye-bye.